Okay, the first um, component of the instrument that we want to look at is assessment. And I'm going to look at the first behavior listed under assessment, which is obtains pertinent subjective data. And I guess what I'm thinking for this section is that they can just do really a general status of the patient um, and do some focused respiratory questions based on the knowledge that they already have in their history and their orders and just try and kind of fill in some of those gaps. I, I think that would be sufficient for subjective data. What do you guys think? I think that's good. I also was thinking that maybe, you know, we talk about pain being the fifth vital sign. Do you think that we need to include a pain assessment as part of the obtaining pertinent subjective data, doing a, a pain assessment as far as like quality, oh. timing, mm -hmm. what makes it better, what makes it worse. So that would be in addition to getting the pain score with the vital signs? Yes, that's what I was originally thinking was, do we want them to go deeper or is that not what we want them to get out of this scenario? I think that it's would be nice, but I don't think it's a priority for this scenario to have that. It could be something we could bring up in debriefing. Okay. But you think as long as we get a general status and a focused mm -hmm. respiratory history, that that would be sufficient enough to get the yeah. point for this, and yes. then anything above that would be more of a nice to know, and yeah. we could bring it out in debriefing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I yes, because the, you know, the point of this scenario is respiratory distress in okay. a COPD patient. Mm -hmm. So that that's fine with me. Okay, well then I'm going to put us down for a general status assessment okay. and a focused respiratory assessment. Okay. And then the next um, behavior under there would be the obtaining the pertin pertinent objective data. And for this, I was back to my vital signs. I was thinking they need to do a full set of vital signs, including pain as the fifth vital sign, um, doing a focused respiratory exam. Mm -hmm. um, lung sounds, uh, visual things that we're observing for that. And then also a quick head to toe. Um, I was thinking cardiac, uh, vascular, respiratory, and also a mental status check. Um, do you think, am I missing anything? Or, um, or how much of a head to toe, I guess, do you feel is important for this scenario to get the point? Just a brief with mental status. Um, I don't think a real in-depth neuro is necessary, but cardiovascular, respiratory, and then also uh, just a brief a peripheral vascular so that we you know that we're checking extremities. Like for edema for circulation. and pulses. Mm -hmm. So if they don't okay. do a GI assessment, we can talk about that in, po in debriefing, mm -hmm. but ne not necessarily take off that point. Right. For that, okay. Okay. What about labs as well? Did you mention oh, labs no, at all? No, I forgot. I believe that's important as well. Okay. Because uh, um, what do we have? We have a basic metabolic and a CBC and a chest X-ray. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want them to look at those pieces of information mm -hmm. as part of their objective data. And they also will have um, ABGs, and that might be really that's important right. to also look at in this um, case with the COPD patient. Yes. Okay, so we decided we need to look at vital signs, we need to, including pain is the fifth vital sign. We need to look at labs, including um, chest x-ray, considering that kind, of, mm -hmm. that kind of data, a focused respiratory assessment, and kind of a quick head to toe, including a, a mental status, cardiac, respiratory, and peripheral vascular. They need to do all those components to get the point for this section. Is that what mm -hmm. we decided? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next behavior is follow up, uh, performs follow-up assessments as needed and looking at um, how the, the patient responds to the albuterol treatment. So that would be very important, um, including subjective. And to me, that's pretty um, clear-cut in terms of, you know, what they have to do. Is there any other follow-up assessment that would be real important in this case? Um, I just think, yeah, a respiratory, that they redo that respiratory assessment, re-listen to those lung sounds, look okay. at that um, pulse ox, make sure that they're reassessing the O2 sats um, after the treatment. And then like you said, I like the, the idea of doing that subjective response to the albuterol treatment. Um, how do you think we can identify if they're recognizing that subjective response? Like by, could we have the patient, the student that's being the patient, 
expect them to maybe understand what their signs and symptoms should be when they get an albuterol treatment mm -hmm. and then have the, the, the student nurse pick up on that? We may have to cue that um, student as a patient if she doesn't pick up on the uh, faster heart rate and, mm -hmm. but yet feeling better because of getting more air. Yeah, and we could even say how, to the student who's the patient, how, how do you expect you would feel if you just received an albuterol treatment? What is it about the albuterol mm -hmm. to kind of cue them but still expect them to be able to answer that question? Mm -hmm. Would that be okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, and I think that's a good way to get those other team members involved that might not necessarily be functioning in the role of the nurse, mm -hmm. but right. the one that's functioning in the role of the patient and assess her, his or her knowledge mm -hmm. as well. That's really a good point. Okay, so the two main things that I'm going to write down is that we want to do a, they want, we want a respiratory assessment mm -hmm. after the treatment and that we want them to be aware of the subjective response to albuterol that their patient might have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. The next behavior is assesses in a systematic and orderly manner using a correct technique. Um, being that respiratory assessment is, you know, very important, that probably should be a priority. Um, so that should be done first. Um, along with that, looking at you know the listening to lung sounds, that would be a big priority. Um, I see that being done uh, posteriorly as being most important. Seeing that you know anterior and posterior that we usually do, but what do you think? Do you think they need to do both or just posterior? I think. Um you know, I would like, if they did both, that's great, but I think they have to do the posterior to get the point. If they just do an anterior assessment, I don't think that's sufficient because they're not going to get those lower lobe sounds. Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's, they have to listen on skin. Mm -hmm. I think if they listen over a gown that, that they, are not, they should not get the point for this because this is all about technique and we have taught them from the beginning and emphasized this throughout clinical that they must listen on the skin. Mm -hmm. So I think it has to be posterior, at a minimum, on skin, um, and, and proper location. And proper location, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they can't be all up here and not get down low enough, or they can't be all down low and not get up high enough. Mm -hmm. I think they have to have some location. What yeah. do you guys think? I agree. I think agree. It's very good. Okay, so I'll put down that we want the respiratory assessment um, done first as a priority is kind of a way of ordering that and then we want them to listen posteriorly, that's the, the mandatory, and it has to be on skin with relatively proper locations. To get the point. To get the yeah. point, does that sound agree. good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, great. That's assessment. That is the end of assessment.